In this video we continue looking at the mathematics of home solar energy. Um, we're going to look at uh, selecting our panels, working out how many panels we can actually fit on our roof space, and then finally determining how much energy that's going to generate on average uh, per day. So when we select our panels, there's a number of considerations we've got to look at. We need to look at the size of the panels, how many watts um, each panel delivers, the cost of the panel, the quality, so there's there's varying levels of quality and so forth, and related to that, the lifetime of the panel. So if the panels are only going to last five years, then they're probably not going to return on your original investment. But if you get a longer lifetime, then we get a better return. The panel that I've selected for this particular study is um, an Australian-made panel. It's 315 watts, uh, and we've got a got the size shown here so one and two-thirds meters by one meter approximately so once we've selected our panels we need to work out how many of them we can actually fit up on the roof a um, th few things to consider here firstly in the southern hemisphere our panels should ideally be facing northwards um, if not if that's not possible then the second alternative is for them to face westwards otherwise if, for example, they're on the southern side, they're really not going to get any sun um, and it's going to be pretty much a waste of money. Other considerations include avoiding shade falling across the panels because that can massively impact on the amount of um, solar energy we can collect. Also, when calculating the number of panels, we need to consider obstructions on our roof, um, things like skylights, vents, chimneys, etc. If we look at our example down here, We've got a pretty good candidate. So we've got a north facing roof here. And I've drawn out, mapped out the, the area in which we can actually place the panels. So the first thing we need to do is actually work out our scale. So if we go down here, so looking at our scale, we've got 12 units corresponding to 5 metres. So therefore, doing some calculations, one unit corresponds to 5 divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.42. Meters. So every unit on our ruler here corresponds to 0.42 of a metre. We can now use that scale to give us an idea of what the dimensions of our space is up here. Let's try to carefully line up our ruler. So this one here, we've got 27 units. It's going to correspond to 27 times that by 0.42 is 11.3 metres. Turning this around here, we've got six units which corresponds to again multiplying that by 0.42 five meters just that i measure this bit we've got five units 2.1 meters and then finally 2.2.5 units corresponding to 1.05 meters so 11 meters 2.5 meters there we've got 2.1 meters and 1.5 Zero five meters. So in this space here, um, something to bear in mind, we've got an overhead view of this. The, the roof is actually pitched, so we're going to have a little bit more than 2.5 meters. I'm assuming that we'd be able to fit two panels um, here and here, doing that all the way across. So we'd actually be able to fit 11 panels by two panels in that space there. And then this one would give us two panels by one panel. So a total number of panels it's going to be 24. So the total energy, or sorry, total wattage, let's start off with the power, will be 24 times by 315 watts. 24 times 315, oops, 7. let's say roughly 7.6 kilowatts. Alrighty, so we've now worked out the total power of our system. So we had total power was equal to 7.6 six kilowatts we can now use the table that we've got on the left here to work out our average daily production so we're located in adelaide so for a one kilowatt system we would produce on average 4.2 kilowatt hours so we're going to use that to determine um, our total energy output for a 7.6 kilowatt system and that's really just a simple matter of multiplying those two numbers together so total energy production equals 
7.6 times by 4.2 put that into a calculator and we get a value of 31.9 kilowatt hours so that's our total production average production so obviously we'll have days where there'll be a lot more than that and we'll have days where it's a lot less than that um, in considering whether or not this is uh, meeting our needs we need to look at our current daily usages we also need to look at when we're using the power um, and look at what the feedback tariff is so how much money we're actually getting when we feed energy back into the grid so if we're mostly using our energy at night of course the sun's out during the day so we're producing the energy during the day so if that's the case then most of the energy that we're producing is being fed back into the grid um, which typically pays a lot less money than what we actually pay when we use the energy ourselves so those sort of um, things need to be considered as well and that's also where you might consider whether or not a battery um, backup battery storage is, is a viable option obviously it's going to cost more money but it can lead to further savings in the long run Okay, hopefully that series of videos has been useful. Um, hope you enjoyed.